inside out and back again. Shh. Brother Koi shakes me before dawn. I follow him to the back garden. In his palm chirps a downy yellow fuzz just hatched. He presses his palm against my squeal. No matter what mother decides, we are not to leave. I must protect my chick and you, your papayas. He holds out his pinky and stares, stares, stares until I extend mine and we hug. April 18. Quiet decision. Dinner time. I help mother peel sweet potatoes to stretch the rice. I start to chop off a potato's end as wide as a thumbnail, then decide to slice off only a sliver. I am proud of my ability to save until I see tears in mother's deep eyes. You deserve to grow up where you don't worry about saving half a bite of sweet potato. April 19. Early monsoon. We pretend the monsoon has come early. In the distance, bombs explode like thunder, slashes light in the sky, gunfire falls like rain. Distant, yet within ears, within eyes, not that far away after all. April 20. The president resigns. On TV, President Theo looks sad and yellow. What has happened to his tan? His eyes brim with tears. This time, they look real. I can no longer be your president, but I will never leave my people or our country. Mother lifts one brow. What she does when she thinks I'm lying. April 21. Watch over us. Uncle Saun returns and tells us to be ready to leave any day. Don't tell anyone or all of Saigon will storm the port. Only Navy families can board the ships. Uncle Saun and father graduated in the same class, Navy class. It was mere luck that Uncle Saun didn't go on the mission where father was captured. Mother pulls me close and pats my head. Father watches over us even if he's not here. Mother tells me she and father have a pact. If war should separate them, they know to find each other through father's ancestral home in the north. April 24th. Chris crossed packs. Pedal. Pedal, mother's feet push the sewing machine. The faster she pedals, the faster stitches appear on heavy brown cloth. Two rectangles make a pack. A long strip makes a handle to be strapped across the wearer's chest. Hours later, the stitches appear in slow motion. The needle a worm laying tiny eggs that sink into brown cloth. The tired worm reproduces much more slowly at the end of the day than at the beginning when mother started the first of five bags. Brother Coy says too loudly, make only three. Mother goes to a high shelf bringing back father's portrait. Come with us or we'll all stay. Think, my son, your action will determine our future. Mother knows this son cannot stand to hurt anyone, anything. Look at father, come with us, so father will be proud you obeyed your mother while he's not here. I look at my toes, feeling Brother Coy's eyes burn into my scalp. I also feel him slowly nodding. Who can go against a mother who has become gaunt like bark from raising four children alone? April 26. Choice. Into each pack, one pair of pants, one pair of shorts, 
three pairs of underwear, two shirts, sandals, toothbrush, and paste, soap, 10 palms of rice grains, three clumps of cooked rice, one choice. I choose my doll, once lent to a neighbor who left it outside where mice bit her left cheek and right thumb. I love her more for her scars. I dress her in a red and white dress, dress with matching hat and booties that mother knitted. April 27th, left behind. 10 gold rimmed glasses. Father brought back from America where he trained before I was born. Brother Kwong's report cards, each ranking him first in class beginning in kindergarten. Vines of bougainvillea, fully in bloom, burgundy and white, like the colors of our house. Vines of jasmine in front of every window that remind mother of the North. A cowboy leather belt, Brother Vu, sewed on mother's machine and broke her needle. That's, that was when he adored Johnny Cash more than Bruce Lee. A row of glass jars Brother Coy used to raise fighting fish. Two hooks in the hammock where I nap. Photographs, every tet at the zoo, father in his youth, mother in her youth, baby pictures where you can't tell whose bottom is exposed for all the world to see. Mother chooses 10 and burns the rest. We cannot leave evidence of father's life that might hurt him. April 27, evening. Wet and crying. My biggest papaya is light yellow, still flecked with green. Brother Vu wants to cut it down, saying it's better than letting the communists have it. Mother says yellow papaya tastes lovely, dipped in chili salt. You children should eat fresh fruit while you can. Brother Vu chops, the head falls, a silver blade slices. Black seeds spill like clusters of ice, wet and cry. April 28th. Sour backs. At the port, we find out there's no such thing as a secret among the Vietnamese. Thousands found out about the Navy ships ready to abandon the Navy. Uncle Son flares elbows into wings, lunges forward protecting his children. But our family sticks together like wet pages. I see nothing but bats, sour and sweaty. Brother Vu steps up, placing mother in front of him and lifting me onto his shoulder. His palms press Brother Kwong and Koi forward. I promise myself to never again make fun of Bruce Lee. April 29th, afternoon. One mat each. We climb on and claim a space of two straw mats under the deck, enough for us five to lie side by side. By sunset, our space is one straw mat, enough for us five to huddle together. Bodies cram every centimeter below deck, then every centimeter on deck. Everyone knows the ship could sink unable to hold the piles of bodies that keep crawling on like, ra like raging rat ants from a disrupted nest. But no one is heartless enough to say stop. Because what if they had been stopped before their turn? April 29th, sunset. In the dark. Uncle Son visits and whispers, whispers to mother. We follow mother who follows Uncle Son, who leads his family up to the deck and off the ship. It has been said the ship next door has a better engine, more water, endless fuel, countless salty eggs. 
Uncle Sohn lingers without getting on the new, sh the new ship. So do we. Hordes pour by us, beyond us. Above us, bombs pierce the sky. Red and green flares explode like fireworks. All lights are off, so the port will not be a target. In the dark, a nudge here, a nudge there. And we end up back on the first ship in the same spot with two mats without lights, our ship glides out to sea, emptied of half its passengers. April 29th, near midnight. Saigon is gone. I listen to the swish swish of mother's handheld fan the whispers among adults, the bombs in the ever greater distance. The commander has ordered everyone below deck, even though he has chosen a safe river route to connect to sea, avoiding the obvious escape path through Wang Tao, where the communists are dropping all the bombs they have left. I hope Titi got out. Mother is sick with waves in her stomach, even though the ship barely creeps along. We hear a helicopter circling, circling near our ship. People run and scream, communists! Our ship dips low as the crowd runs to the left and then to the right. This is not helping mother. I wish they would stand still and hush. The commander is talking. Do not be frightened. It's a pilot for our side who has jumped into the water, letting his helicopter plunge in behind him. The pilot appears below deck, wet and shaking. He salutes the, com the commander and shouts, at noon today, the communists crashed their tanks through the gates of the presidential palace and planted on the roof a flag with one huge star. Then he adds, when no one wants to hear, it's over, Saigon is gone. April 30, late afternoon.